Uh, we have power back to the vehicles. Um, we can hold position here while we get settled. Thanks.
So for our online viewers, we are still here. We're just troubleshooting some uh, camera issues that happened a few minutes ago. So stand by. And we'll see how this all plays out. Thank you so much for your patience.
Bridge, Nev. Okay. Uh, we're going to recover the vehicles. If you could uh, track a line at the ship's current heading, 0 0.3 knots. We'll give you an estimated um, on surface time in just a few minutes. Three hundred meters. What of what speed do you think? Okay, online viewers, it looks like we have made the decision to recover the vehicles, so they're going to be making their way back up to the surface so that our ROV techs can take a closer look at what is going on there. So, so sorry about that. We are recovering the vehicles.
Okay, so Brittany, as you as you said, we are recovering the vehicles. Um, we currently have power, but we want to get the vehicles back on board to determine um, potential issues that we need to troubleshoot. Uh, we'll be starting our recovery now. Um, we'll be on the surface between 8.10 and 8.30 Hawaii time. All right, thank you so much, Samantha. So again, those vehicles that we were using, Hercules as well as Atalanta, we were able to get the power back on, but those, uh, we're making our ascent. We just wanna make sure that we get those ROVs back on the ship, take a close look at what happened. So we have some unexpected blue water coming our way.
Is the back row watching uh, reruns of the seafloor? Yes. Oh. Any Just new finds? <laughs> uh, no. We'll tell you later. Roger. <laughs> Best boulders? Best boulders. I still think that the best boulder was the one we saw last night. The one I said was the boulderiest boulder I've ever seen. Was that yesterday? Yeah, that was quite a boulder. It was I don't know quite if it was yesterday, but the it was boulder. quite sizable. The bouldering? The boulder. The bouldering boulder. Yeah, so um, recapping, we are recovering right now. Uh, Hercules at Atalanta. Just bringing those ROVs back on deck so our, our ROV pilots can take a nice and close look at those. Um, we did have a loss of power for a few minutes and um, obviously the power is back on, but just to be on the safe side, we're bringing those ROVs up to take a nice look at them. So happy surprise blue water, I guess. Sorry. The good news is we got the power back on. At least the sunrise looks really pretty. The way the water um, is getting lit up by the sun, it looks like it's kind of golden right now a little bit. What does it? I like that. We can put but is it that. actually that pretty or is it just the camera? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's actually that pretty. So I might have to go ground truth it. What was that? <laughs> I'd have to ground truth it. Yeah. It's a pretty sunset right now, or sunrise. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's discombobulated, yeah. including us. You all know why this happened, right? It's because we said sub aerial too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Shut this it down. This is karma. <laughs> <laughs> and done. <laughs> said I'm tired of you. <laughs> no more exploration for you. <laughs> Somebody said it's because you were talking about scary things. That's why. <laughs> That's what you get. Well, yeah, might as well answer questions as they are still coming in the chat. Um, So both Nick and Steve stepped out of the control van for a moment, but I do see that there is a question about research projects that are going on where the samples are going to different groups. So excellent question. We will get to that in just a moment. They can tell you a lot more detail about uh, the future of these samples that we have collected.
And what time zone are we in? We are uh, in Hawaiian Standard Time. So currently where we are right now is 6.51. This watch started at 4 a.m. And we're going until those, eight. yeah, eight or, <laughs> or until those vehicles get back on deck. I think it should be just after eight, actually, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, we were seeing some really, really cool things down there. Um, like I said, I was happy because we were seeing a lot of things that, I like things that move, <laughs> right? Even if it's really slow, like the sea cucumbers or the snails. And um, so we were seeing quite a few of those things and then, you know, something happened, the power went off. And so we're just bringing those vehicles back up to uh, investigate what happened and make sure that those ROVs are good to go. In video feed number two, you might be able to see occasionally this little white blob <laughs> pops in and out of the screen. That's actually a part of the ROV. That's part of one of the nets that's used to scoop and collect little nuggets of rocks. Yeah, so that's not an animal. That's part of a net. Do we see many sharks on our dives? Um, I wouldn't say many, but occasionally, yes. We haven't seen any yet this uh, on this cruise, NA-153, but I know that we have some footage of a six-gilled shark from a few years ago. And I think that I've heard that when we do our um, ROV Descents and ascents, sometimes we can see some sharks closer to the surface that kind of are circling around, but I have yet to see that. The six goat sharks are so cool. They almost look like, I don't know, to me, they look like ghost sharks because they just move so incredibly slow. <laughs> Taking their time. Yeah. Them and Greenland sharks are so interesting. Yeah, Greenland sharks are wild. Yeah. What's your favorite type of shark, Brittany? Ooh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> so Logan's asking me what's my favorite shark. Um, unpopular opinion, I don't really like sharks. <laughs> I, I know. Um, but if I had to choose what my favorite shark is, I would say probably a whale shark. Whale sharks are fine. I like them a lot. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah, not, not because it has the word whale in it. It's because it has, it's it's because it has the word whale in it. It's really not why. I'll go just too much. <laughs> I definitely have to go with spinner shark on that one. Ooh. They're the most insane sharks. That's okay. Tell us about they them. found a way to hunt so that they can have a 360 degree mouth, basically, what? like by spinning really, really fast. Oh, that's awesome. Flinging themselves out of the that's water. That's terrifying. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> I respect sharks. I, I, don't, I don't know if I really like them very much, but I do respect them. But yeah, whale sharks are cool. Um, leopard sharks, I like those. Yeah, leopard sharks are cool. You like the ones without teeth, <laughs> without real teeth. <laughs> without real teeth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite one, for similar reason, Gabby gave a cool reason. Um, 
thresher sharks are the ones that they're like a lot of them are in the Atlantic and they have really 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 long tails yeah and they use them as basically like almost whips underwater and they move them so fast that they create cavitation bubbles where the bubbles like implode and collapse on themselves and then use it to like stun a prey no before way. it eats it which is so cool okay yeah that's cool yeah I'll give them that Someone on chat says basking sharks. Okay, those are I okay. Love, my second favorite is basking sharks. Basking <laughs> sharks are really cool too. Okay. You would like those too. They don't have that many teeth. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> those are okay. <laughs> but I know I don't know. Okay, so I know that they're like really slow, but I feel like they're almost too slow, where they're kind of scary. So it like circles back. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My shark logic is very, <laughs> it's complex. Not too fast, not too slow. <laughs> you like the school zone level <laughs> sharks, the, the whale sharks that just kind of move at a constant I speed. They're know. predictable. Yeah. You can touch them. <laughs> they won't do anything to you. <sighs> totally <Hey>. fair. <laughs> We have Daphne joining us. Hey, Daphne. Um, and Daphne is wondering, what are your favorite kinds of fish? Excellent question. Um, one of my favorite fish is a powder blue tang. I just think they're really, really cool looking. Um, so if you watched Finding Nemo, Dory is a type of tang. And a powder blue tang is a little bit more of a light color and just, I don't know, I just really like the coloration. It's really like delicate and pretty looking. <laughs> the front row's having a time up there, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna toss it over to Logan. What's your favorite fish? Um. <laughs> I, yes, so my favorite type of fish is a reef trigger fish. Um, Good choice. Yeah, which is like, um, the Hawaiian name is, it's the, also like the Hawaiian state fish, and it's humuhuwa nukunukukua pua'a, and it's awesome. Um, also, one of the first fish that I like ever really remember seeing i was swimming in hawaii when i was like three and it's the first i'll tell that story later but um i saw like a flurry of reef trigger fish and they're just beautiful have the coolest patterns yeah um and chomp on coral <laughs> which is really funny to see and what coral i'm pretty sure they chomp on coral oh they chomp on coral yeah they'll like go up and take a bite which is really funny if you're uh snorkeling it almost sounds like you're like crushing a plastic water bottle underwater and they'll like go oh, up yeah, and yeah, take a little yeah. take a little bite yeah yeah any tropical fish is just chef's kiss beautiful i'm a huge fan of halibut like when oh. you can follow them like flatfish are pretty funny um but like halibut are just enormous and following them with a the vehicle like as they sort of like scoot along the bottom is pretty magical. They're just so massive. Did yeah. you say that you followed it just for the halibut? <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> that is exactly what we were doing. I was waiting quietly. <laughs> oh, that was oh, there you go. Snuck in on that. I really did. It wasn't even a part of the conversation. <laughs> welcome back, Nick. Yeah, welcome back. <laughs> Sam, you had to be quick. <laughs> Stole your thunder. Now you have to answer what's your favorite fish. Yep. It can't be rockfish or stonefish. Oh boy. Uh. Or rock cod. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably something that tastes delicious. Uh, <laughs> Chilean sea bass. Can't be that either. No. <laughs> not a good fish to eat. No. Not, not fish for the sake of a fish. fish. There's actually yeah. no, no such a thing. Yeah. Uh, isn't Chilean sea bass? It's it, it, Antarctic toothfish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patagonian. Patagonian toothfish. Patagonian toothfish. 
There's a lot of different and, tooth uh, fishes. He, he jumped out of the sea one day. He said, you know, this is my new name. I'm no longer Patagonian <laughs> toothfish. I want to be known as Chilean sea bass. That's because if you see toothfish on a menu, you're not like, mm, yeah. yum. <laughs> toothfish. I should toothfish tonight. Maybe herring. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Herring's cool. Herring's cool. Do you like herring? <laughs> That's your that's your fish now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can use it to chop down a tree. <laughs> if you don't have a fish that we uh, we allow, <laughs> you get assigned a fish. Did I detect a Monty Python reference in there? You yeah. did. Thank that you. Was, that, you was that was great. That almost flew under the radar. Thank yeah. you. Thank uh, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's not a Eddie. common reference. No. Cool. Nope. That was impressive. I Thanks. like that one. Thanks. Well uh, done. Thanks. Caffeine's finally starting to hit. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, like? What's that like? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> Let me live through you. Honestly, waking up today was the hardest it's been oh, in it um, years. Yeah. Like, it was really difficult. <laughs> I went to grab my phone uh, when the alarm went off, and it slipped on the side of my bed. And I had, like, a little moment of panic because I didn't want to wake my roommate. And I'm just, like, reaching over and trying to find it. And it's going off for 20, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, like, the bed today was just extra cozy, extra, like, mm. perfect, like, warm, but not hot, and just, it was very alluring to just want to curl up and just stay in that thing, but here I am. <laughs> 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 I, I made it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else want to talk about their favorite fish? I'm quite partial to large schools of uh, sardines or anchovies. Ooh, They're yeah. really They're beautiful. Too. Yeah, swimming all together. Actually, any large schools of fish. Yep. Little tornadoes. Have you ever swam like in a bait ball, or have you just see them? Seen yeah, them? <clears throat> down at the southern tip of um, Baja California, uh, Cabo Pulmo, it's a marine uh, protected area that was actually. Um, designated as such by the local community. It was a community of fisher people oh, who cool. over the decades saw their catches dwindling and they decided as a community to restrict fishing and uh, kind of convert their own businesses into like snorkeling and diving tourism. Cool. Um, so it's an incredible spot. There's a really cool documentary about it called um, uh, something, but if you, <laughs> if you look for Cabo <laughs> Pomo documentary. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I really enjoyed uh, that. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a great it's a great look into how a community kind of like built that from the like grassroots up um, instead of having like a nonprofit come in or you know um, it's really cool kind of external forces decide that it was going to be a protected area they decided as a community to do that um, and it's it's incredible now you know there's only so many dives a day that you can do there um, so it's it's still a pretty um, pristine environment and and the environment really rebounded quickly in the decades that they've, wow. um, it, I think it was only designated a marine protection area in like the 80s. So it's really wow. made an amazing turnaround. But they're a big, um, oh, what are the fish? Type of jack. Um, oh, so quite nice. large. And that's yeah. actually kind of scary being in a tornado of, of oh large. Oh my god, yeah, like jack are yeah. cool, but they're powerful and kind yeah, of aggressive. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wow, so that's awesome. Circling back to your favorite fish, Nick, there's a great documentary I had to uh, read for school called Hooked, Pirates Poaching and the Perfect Fish. It's all about the Chilean sea bass like market and how how they rena renamed them as the Chilean sea bass from the toothfish and how they're just like very overfished and the whole um, scheme basically of how it works that, that they're still being fished like that. Yeah, um, the fish market is a is a little nefarious, and and <laughs> just <laughs> how they how they go about New naming girl. fish. <laughs> yeah, uh, oftentimes you'll go to a restaurant and you're not you're not eating what they're telling you. Chilean sea bass is is uh, often culprit. So oftentimes you'll get a different type of bass because of the situation that you just mentioned with Chilean sea bass. Um, You'll, you'll get some kind of bass, but it's most likely not a Chilean sea bass. Not not most likely, but uh, it's it's been incident uh, in the past. Huh. That's why we have Seafood Watch. Yeah. Shout out. Yep. Now, 
Uh, there, there's actually an entire branch of NOAA fisheries that deals with fish forensics. Interesting. Yeah. Making sure that fish are what they say they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they jump out of the water and yeah. they can fool you. Yeah, they, they can tell you <laughs> their name, but you wouldn't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just wouldn't know. They could fool you. Bamboozled. <laughs> I I like yeah. the the a, any of the low fitted species like the the monkfish the angler fishes that kind of like blend into the background, flat on the seafloor, unassuming, but you could see them very obviously uh, hiding. I have a really cool um, series of images I took on a cruise in the Gulf of Maine of one trying to eat a lobster. Oh, yeah, that's cool. yeah, a whole lobster. <laughs> they have a they, their mouth can can swallow a whole lobster. My yeah, but then you have a lobster in your mouth. Yeah, like, I what know. do you do then? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> get some melted butter? I, I have never been in that situation in my life. That's not when you get life, over it, when you get yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> never forget the butter. Forget the melted butter and lemon. All right, then we have Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm, wondering how deep is the water where we are right now? I think uh, it was around 20, 2,600 meters when we left the bottom, around 2,600. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. currently the ROV is 1,353 meters and making its way on up. But when we left the bottom, it was close to about 26. Yeah, we were at 25, 33. Okay. So quite deep. So that's why it's taking us a while to make its way to the surface. Does anyone have a favorite extinct animal? Oh. Favorite <laughs> extinct animal. Wow, I like that one. I think. Mine, um, the Tasmanian tiger. Yeah, Tasmanian tiger. That one's really beautiful and cool and sad, but a really cool animal. Not to be confused with the uh, Tasmanian devil, but <laughs> and that's a Tasmanian marsupial tiger. Or no? It is a marsupial, yeah. Yeah, it has a pouch. Yeah, marsupials are strange, strange creatures. They are. They really are. Um. Favorite? I don't know, but pterosaurs freak me out. Oh. <laughs> I used to work at a, a museum of natural history, and we had a uh, exhibit that was all about pterosaurs, and they're fascinating. They're amazing, really cool, really <laughs> unique animals. But OMG, the was it the Quetzalcoatlus? No, thank you. Cause you're tight. <laughs> now I have to look this up. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's like cute, yeah, yeah. It's it, like too yeah, big. Something. They walk on their elbows, which is just freaky. Can I <laughs> nope. Can you say their name again? Q U E. Okay. Let me see if I can. Gets, like it's all. Q U E T Z A L. Yeah. Q U T Z. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Is that, a, is oh, that yeah. some, similar to a terror bird that we were talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah so there are like lots it. of different types of pterosaurs. Mm. Um, and this was, I think, the largest one that they have discovered so far. That is terrifying. Yeah, look yep. at it. So I'm guessing you really hated the first episode of like Disney's new dinosaurs narrated by David Attenborough. You know what I'm talking about? Nope. Okay, well, don't watch it, because the first episode is all of all these. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm simultaneously... It was, it was so good. I'm simultaneously really good. fascinated and terrified of them. Yeah. You but also must have never watched Dinosaur Train, because that's definitely what the Dinosaur Train dinosaurs are. Yeah, I know. Are. And that would make you not scared of them. Oh. <laughs> I have an unnatural fear of uh, giant flightless birds. Okay. Terror birds. Okay. Um... I, you know, just like a 10 to 15 foot bird that can <laughs> run faster than you and peck at you and 
Uh, it just, it's, it, the thought of it is terrifying. That's fair. Apparently they were also the size of giraffes. Yeah, no. Yeah, you which problem. Do, yeah. doesn't help. Ooh, that's, that's a, a nope. problem. Yeah. Hard nope. Hard, hard right? nope. Samantha's with me here. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> my favorite nope. extinct animal is going to have to go, I'm going to have to go with the trilobite. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The trilobite was along oh. for a long, long time. Yeah. And uh, I think it needs to make a comeback. Well, if you want to see something cool, uh, try Hallucigenia. It's an extinct I will not animal. try that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch try especially. It. <laughs> I th they I don't think they can they still can't figure out which what way was that? which way is up with this animal whether what? it's really cool. Oh yeah, that does not look like animal. does it walk on its spines or does it walk on its legs? This looks like a child's drawing. Oh <laughs> my, it's like a s how a s how large <laughs> was it? How that's, is that? that's why it's extinct. It uh, didn't didn't work out too well. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make yeah, any right. Sense that here. makes sense. Really cool. It doesn't make sense. It makes sense that it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. There is also, yeah. let me see. I love ammonites. That's mine. Apparently, according to ammonites? Google, they were about the size of an umbrella. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and now it's not very closed. Yeah, nope. 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 <laughs> nope. <laughs> like a okay, porcupine okay. centipede. Has anyone ever heard of the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but Opabinia? What is that? It why it does it have such a big It has snap? five eyes. And it has like not a four, not six. Nose. Oh, yeah. Five. Yep. Oh, so is it a, is it a squid? Elephant trunk? It's Soft <laughs> body? <ridiculous>. <laughs> <laughs> These are. Wow. These are fairly. Talk about a kid's drawing. Oh my god, nope. <laughs> now I'm with you on nope. That is what? All, that literally looks like a Star Wars character. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Now <laughs> I know where they got that from, go honestly. Back, the green one on the bottom right. Oh yeah. <laughs> How did it? That, that that's like a spider scorpion fish. <laughs> I don't like it. Is that a mouth? I really wish we could show these. I know. I wish I could <laughs> like screen share right now and yeah. just. Somebody in the chat is saying something about cassowary, the cassowary war in Australia. Oh my God! Yo, he, actually, well, yeah, y'all know about it. this? No. I've heard about yeah, this. No, like that. So, um. so Australia tried to basically have a battle with the cassowaries. Actually, no, that's the emus. Sorry, I'm thinking of the emu war. Oh. Maybe this oh, is something different, but I know there, there, there was a, like a battle in emu in, in the emu, emu war. I think that's the same thing. <laughs> is it yeah. the same thing? Yeah, and they lost, right? Yeah, they lost. The basically <laughs> Australia like tried Casual to tees. fight some of the emu back and like wipe some of them out, and emu are just so um, ridiculous. First attempt, second attempt. Yeah, there were multiple attempts. <laughs> Basically, what? they lost too many resources, and they were like, this is not worth it. The emus and the cassowaries can live their life. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> Outcome, minimal impact on the overall emu population. Which is great. Power to the emus. Yeah, for sure. Power to the emus. <laughs> I feel like they were just bored. Like, hey, let's start a war with some birds. Like, uh, you know. What? You got to choose your battles carefully in Australia. There's a lot of things Lewis coming for you there. 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. I mean, th there are a lot of different types of extermination programs for invasive species. Like out here in the Pacific remote, remote islands, rats especially are uh, are a concern for bird they, populations. Do they ever else? use light machine guns? <laughs> um, uh, yeah. To take out the rats? So. Not the rats, but the pigs. But uh, yellow crazy ants too. Are uh, are very uh, yeah. invasive on these islands. And actually, the Johnson Atoll uh, Crazy Ant Strike Program just ended, right? After yeah, a couple apparently of, it was like successful. A, it was like a full decade, right? Wow, if not more. Having uh, teams of volunteers out for six months at a time on Johnson Atoll. I want to know how you eliminate a Crazy Ant colony. Yeah. So I have very good news. Uh, apparently. Um, there's going to be an action comedy movie retelling the events of the Emu War, oh <laughs> written by John Cleese, story oh Will Ferrell, uh, and Rob Schneider. <laughs> That's uh, awesome! Wow, I will definitely appreciate that. What's 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 the, is there a name yet? Uh, I don't think so. What do I have to look forward to? <laughs> it is uh, scheduled to begin production in 2023. Incredible! Very good news indeed. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I tried to bring it back to science. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> tried and failed. <laughs> Steve doesn't have anything to zoom in on right now. That's it, that's the default. To bring it back you to science. We've lost us. Zoom in on this right here. We're literally off the deep end right now. <laughs> zoom in right here. <laughs> <laughs> zoom on this. I think I see something. I know your tricks. I'm I'm just zooming in on old dive yeah. photos. <laughs> Still trying to identify that snail. I I can't I can't. I, 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 there's a zero search is found. I'm pretty sure it's a gastropod, but I. Uh, yeah, mollusks are weird. Well, you'll have a better look in just a couple hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. I hope it stays integrated and doesn't dissociate, but if it is a mollusk, it shouldn't. If it's a holothurian, that might be more indicative that it's it's, uh, it's, it's not a holothurian, I'm pretty sure. Steve, what was your favorite extinct animal? The hallucinogenia. No. <laughs> hallucinogenia. <Okay. laughs> oh. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Although there's a lot of living fossils we even find oh in the deep gosh. sea. What? So they don't have to be extinct to be old. They just they can be sure. very old lineages. Yeah. I, Steve, I've never seen this animal in my life, and I am blown away. Yeah. What? Wow. When? When was this? When was this alive? <laughs> it was a long time ago. Cambrian or Precambrian? What, what was it? Hallucigenia, Cambrian. Oh, pre Hallucigenia. Oh, the yeah. Hallucigenia yeah. again. Yeah, that was. Uh, I'm over here googling yellow crazy ant. I've never heard of a yellow crazy ant before. I really want to see one and see how crazy they are. Yeah, I'm intrigued. If anyone else has any weird. <laughs> Creatures that you know of that we haven't mentioned yet, throw them up in the chat. Why not? And look up hallucinogenia. Yeah. Blow your mind. All right, Steve, I got a science question for you. So somebody's asking, what do halosaurs eat? So we did briefly see a halosaur on this dive. What yep. do they eat? Halosaurs are uh, macro invertivores, so they're probably eating small, soft-bodied benthic invertebrates either on or just uh, just close to the seafloor. So, so like shrimp? Worms, yeah, maybe small shrimp or amphipods, yeah. Yeah. Probably not anything very large, yeah. Yeah. That was really cool to see that. It had a kind of like an opalescent uh, sheen to it. It's really neat. The opalescent sheen. I like that. <laughs> Might even call it a luster. A luster. A shine. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> tried, um. Nick. I tried. <laughs> Bathysaurfish. Okay. Bathysaurus is a very nice fish, yeah. Extinct or alive? Alive. They're alive. I actually um, saw one on this dive, but we we didn't get a chance to zoom in on it. We saw one on this dive? Yeah. What? It was it was right as right what? before we picked up our last rock. Oh. Yeah. I wish we could have zoomed. That would it, be really cool. I didn't want to yeah, panic the we were kind of moving very quickly um, in another direction. Don't want to mm. cause a panic, yes, that's you fair. Know.
Right, so if there's anybody online who's just now tuning in, um, yeah, we had some unexpected power outage that occurred with the ROVs, so we are recovering. Um, the power is back on, but just to be on the safe side, we're bringing those ROVs back up so that um, our pilots can take a nice close look at them while they're on deck, make sure everything is really back in working order before we resume diving. So we did have to cut that dive short, unfortunately, but while we were down um, exploring that unnamed seamount, we did see some really, really amazing things. We got a few collections, um, rock as well as biological samples. So we still have some things to uh, bring back on board and um, process in the wet lab. <laughs> Somebody's wondering if we have seen any Chana cops lately. I think the last one was a few days ago. I believe it was a baby Chana cops. So like, definitely a cherry on top. I don't think that we've seen a Chana cops yet on our watch. Mm -mm. Four to eight. No. Uh, no, I guess not. Yep. We need to look harder. Either that or they're avoiding us for some reason. But um, yeah, it's been a few days since we've seen a Chana cops. Womp womp. I really, l I prefer actually the the shallower genus, the Chonax. It has a uh, Chonax has a much more like dour looking like. Frowny frowns. Even more face. frowny yeah. than a chonax. Even more. <laughs> chonax. Wow, okay. And uh, it's more colorful and it's more boxy looking. But it's usually sh much shallower, maybe shallower than 700 meters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it also known as the pink frog mouth? Uh, no? I don't know. Okay. I mean, Usually those groups are known as coffin fishes anyway, so I, I, I don't know other common names, but typically my referred to as coffin fishes. My. Yeah, Chonax. C-H-U-N-A-X. Chonax. In my opinion, better than Chonacops. You know, you might be right. We'll have to go, um, you see them a lot on um, shallower near reef islands and atolls in this area but you won't see them very deep. So if, if we get a chance to go dive you know, in the future at, at um, you know, other remote islands, like around Howland and Baker or Jarvis or even Kingman Palmyra, you probably will probably see them there. <laughs> Someone says Chana cops are cute and Chanox are ugly. No, no, that's <laughs> not true. Science, science says science that's Steve not true. Says science, no. science says no. <laughs> it's in the eye of the beholder, I guess. It's one of my favorite riddles. I'm like, I'm gonna end up giving it away in this, but um, if a bee is in the hand, what is in the eye? It's the eye of the, the, eye of the bee holder. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> 
I like that one. <laughs> 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 Chat is very upset with Steve now. Oh. They're rioting. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to storm the ship. <laughs> yeah, somebody's wondering when you have an event like this outage, do you have a checklist? or uh, order of operations you jump into. Uh, I can only imagine. Um, I don't know if the ROV pilots are available to answer that or not, but I imagine that they have a very, very, very long checklist that they're going to have to... Um, uh, ROV pilots are available. Come oh, yay. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, is there a specific checklist when um, something like this happens if there's a power outage? when it comes to uh, checking up on the ROVs when they get back onto deck? So we have a specific checklist every time the ROVs come on deck. We have a checklist that we go over the vehicle with like right after they come on deck. Um, and then we have another checklist right before they go in the water, kind of like a pre-flight that you do on a plane. Um, so those checklists will be done as well. But like, but for this, this is going to be troubleshooting. Like We've already started looking through systems, um, trying to isolate where the problem might be. Um, and we have some ideas, and we'll start doing like our basic troubleshooting, um, checking each of those systems one by one, and we should be able to isolate the problem. But that's going to be problem solving, just sort of as we see results from each of our tests. We don't really know where that will lead us until it gets us there. Excellent. Yeah, so that kind of follows on, follows along with some questions I'm getting as to uh, if we can fix the problem, will you dive again on this site today? So we don't know, um, and I think it just depends on what the ROV pilots discover when we get those ROVs back here on deck and they take a close look at them. Sorry, I can't give a more satisfying answer. We did get up to 16 on our shrimp count, so we did pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty, that's, that's, <laughs> that's good. There were a lot of shrimp. Oh. Yeah, that was a very shrimpy sea mount. I feel like the 8 to 12 crew would call it shrimp town mountain or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm realizing I didn't give it fully away, and I think there's actually, there's like a better answer to this riddle. So it's, if a bee is in the hand, what is in the eye? The actual answer to the riddle is beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. More beautiful answer, less cheesy. <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Slightly less cheesy. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Equal cheese. Equal cheese. <laughs> Equal cheese. Is that an original creation? No, no. I don't know, actually, who came up with this. I basically had one of my friends came up with it, and then we took turns. Basically, whoever figured it out, like we would then sit and test one of our friends and let them ponder on it for a couple hours or a couple days. Eventually, we all learned new. Can't tell you the author. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, some people in our chat are having Argus flashbacks. Um, yeah, so we're not using Argus this time around. We're using Atalanta. Argus is on on land. There are plans to use Argus again, uh, just for the sake of these cruises. We're not using Argus. We're using the smaller kind of the, the smaller version of it, Atalanta. So what ice cream flavors do you think they're going to have out tomorrow? Oh, man. I hope they have that, like, mochi honeydew the mochi one honeydew. again. That was crazy. It was uh, really good. Remember, there's no guarantees. Don't psych yourself up. That's true. Yep. What it's do you true. mean? There's never any guarantees at the end of the cruise. You don't know how much is left over. <gasps> Might all don't be gone. Don't say that, Steve. Really? I thought, it, I I thought ice cream was always good. Expectations in limit uh, checked, you know? Always That's check the science freezer. Steve might have some. Stowed away. I did last year. I bought ice cream uh, out, and that was too much. So you put it in the like negative eighty degree one? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no, we had um, we Never. had some spare space in another chest freezer. Nice. But yeah, we generally keep food items out of the minus eighty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's fair. It's one of one of the more sensitive pieces of equipment that we have in science department. I feel like they spoil us so much on this ship. Like we, with food. Yeah, I mean we get snacks every day, like fresh baked cakes and like cookies. <laughs> A lot of Nutrigrain bars. Nutrigrain bars. Nutri Those bars. are fresh baked, right? <laughs> Too many, so I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe not so much those, but still, way more than I ever expected when I first came on. So if I don't get any more ice cream, it's okay. I'll be all right. I'll walk it off. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so we used to have different types of desserts. It wasn't always ice cream, too. Sometimes we would have candy bars. Uh, were very common. Um, more often than not, a couple of years ago, it was often there was always a fruit option after every meal, like uh, either whole strawberries or whole grapes, uh, you know, bunches of grapes or apples. Or I enjoy the apples. Yeah, I like apples. the apples. Apples, yeah, apples are, are good. Great. But if but I had to choose between apples and ice cream, I would choose ice cream a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I can see. Your, I can see your reasoning there. Hundred <laughs> percent. And like this, whatever ice cream they brought on board, like it is excellent. I don't know what brand it is, or I don't, I need to find out from the cooks by that. It's a local Honolulu brand, I think. Oh, so yeah, standby. I can uh, get the name. My favorite thing, I, I really enjoyed the vanilla, but with cinnamon. Oh, yeah. Cinnamon oh. on top, it's an experience. Yeah. A delicacy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Honolulu-based company called Dave's Ice Cream. Dave's? Oh. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, does Dave know that? Free advertising, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dave's Ice Cream Factory. Astronaut ice cream. <laughs> no, we don't have that on here. I haven't had that in so long. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever actually had it, but I've heard it's very similar to the marshmallows in Lucky Charms uh, cereal. Am I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like in texture, kind of. I feel like it cracks open more like, I don't know. I haven't had it since I went to like the Air and Space Museum when I was a really little kid. But yeah. I don't know what my excuse is. I mean, I work in a place where we sell astronaut ice cream and I just don't, I don't know. You gotta try I'll it. I'll try it when I get back. Yeah.
freeze-dried ice cream sandwich. Interesting. So good. Yeah, they have um, vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. Oh man. I think they have freeze-dried strawberries too. Oh, I gotta do it again. Cam bow right now is stunning. It's gorgeous. Kicking it up. Someone's requesting a behind the scenes stream of the cafeteria, I wish. <laughs> we don't have that available though. But if you wanna check out the sunrise, feel free to do that. We have that up oh. on uh, channel three. Beautiful golden sunrise today. Oh yeah. Good time to catch up on notes. I imagine you'll have a brief summary for this dive here. Yeah, I've been keeping a log of notes uh, for each dive because we put together a summary article every year in mm -hmm. uh, the oceanography publication. And so I've mostly species lists, but I'm also writing down all of the potential new species and new records for the area. And it is not insignificant, this cruise. And I think that's in part due to just we have some really talented, excellent scientific expertise out here and on shore. We're also going to have some really nice records of uh, rocks <laughs> descriptions. What's the, what's the deepest rock record ever? Uh, you got <laughs> that on the top of your head? Well, I mean, from from a sampling point of view, uh, you know, when a PI is requesting samples, they don't have some, often don't have much to, to go off of when they just have you know images of uh, the dive footage or, or in the lab. But with the ability to uh, saw them open and, and have you know a general description of, of what they look like inside then uh, it can be a lot easier uh, to yeah. determine what kind of samples you're looking for for a particular type of research so if you were looking for a certain type of rock would you just request all of the rocks from a certain area be cut and sent to you or would you go to a, a repository and yeah physically um, look at them what's more effective or efficient I, I, I think I mean Given the proximity of, of where the repositories are to UNLV, it wouldn't it wouldn't be reasonable to, to go to the repository. Um, but I mean, even even with basic descriptions, uh, you can always request the rock, and if it doesn't work, just send it back to the repository. Um, still, probably be cheaper than flying out and looking at it firsthand. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's still a numbers game, so requesting as many samples as, as you can afford to bring back to the lab um, a lot of the samples that we got from the last dive um, were very had, had very aphanetic textures which just basically means um, crystals that you couldn't see at all with the naked eye uh, and no phenocryst phases either yeah yeah so um, so with those we'll send those off to a laboratory to make thin sections and um, eventually uh, be able to see modal abundances of mineral phases. Yeah. So, promising, but uh, not definitive until till further studies. But we've had a nice uh, array of diversity when it comes to rock selection even when the, we're, we're, we can't date the rocks um, we've obviously have some some of those rocks that are almost pure ferromanganese um, thankfully not too many uh, for 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 our purposes uh, we've collected I think three samples of the uh, nuggets or crust as I like to call them um, <laughs> uh, we'll see you know um, could be scholarly disagreement sure <laughs> yeah sure um, <laughs> we have one fossiliferous limestone which 
everybody was really excited to see um, just almost pure calcite, uh, white color inside, and uh, kind of evidence of bioturbation or, or maybe even shell fragments. But definitely, uh, well, not definitely, but more, more than likely biogenic origin. Um, and we have a few other just weird altered rocks, um, some of them calcified, some of them uh, are mostly clay, but uh, they're, if, if nothing else, they're, they're very interesting to look at. Uh, we got some volcanic breaches, uh, volcanoclastic breaches, uh, which are just basically accumulations of, uh, of uh, lava flow that picks up pre-existing rocks or even rocks that have solidified from the same eruption. So we got a nice, nice uh, sample array, I would say. Yep. And we've even recruited some uh, some new members to cut the rocks out to cut the rock with the rock saws. Uh, Brittany did a great job of cutting some rocks. Yep. Thank you. Certified rock cutter. Really? You mean it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're wow. passing out certificates at the end of the uh, the end of the cruise. Rob's making them. Excellent. Do you know if the one that I cut open was it um, was it a good rock? Um, the one you cut open yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I th th so all all the rocks that we collected yesterday that we're going to try to date, we don't we don't know um, whether they're good. They 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 definitely have potential. We're going to have to make thin sections. Yeah. Send them off. Well, you keep me posted. I want to yeah. know about my rock. A, look at that. Is uh, that a plegatharia? On, uh, uh, no, no, no it's it's yep. Still looking. I think we just hit a bloom in 2017 and 2018, 2019. There was a bloom of these things. I haven't seen many often, many lately. Where was that? It, it was a bit further south. Um, they were actually most common in Kingman, Palmyra, Jarvis, and Howland and Baker that year. Interesting. But they were everywhere, and I think I think there is a strong equatorial influence since yeah. the productivity is higher. Was that the same year as the pyrosome blooms? Uh, yep. That was in 2016, I think. I think that was 2016. Yeah, because that, that was the year we did, the first year we did ONC. Or not ONC, um, OCNMS. Uh, and we did, uh, we had some trawls going for plankton and they just came up full of pyrosomes. Go ahead, Bridge. Perfect, thank you. Um, I just checked the ADCP and it looks like uh, currents uh, 0 0.6 knots from uh, uh, the same direction that the GPS is reporting. Thanks.
Steve, would you be able to tell us any more about um, Bathysaur? Bathysaurus? Bathy yeah. Are they yeah. only deep sea fish, or are there different types that can uh, be shallower? There are, there are shallower lizard fishes, but I think that's the... Yeah, I think that that's the only deep sea lizard fish that I'm aware of. Bathysaur. So Bathysaurus, yeah. Deep sea lizard fish. Yeah. They look like something out of a uh, Tim Burton film. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, not a mouth I'd want to brush. <laughs> teeth. I don't know if they brush theirs either, you know. I guess they, yeah, Bathysaurus. Maybe they do have. What is going on there? That's Bathysaurus. I guess they do occur shallower because there's some photos here in the Mesophotic. Most of the ones we see are these uh, Bathysaurus ferox like. Cool. But a great website if you want to learn more about fishes generally and even probably more than you want to know. Take, uh, check out Fishbase, which has a lot of scientific data in addition to. Uh, a lot of common names, a lot of scientific names for fishes, both deep sea and uh, shallow water, and especially focuses on commercially fished fishes. Fish base. But Bathysaurus is a, you know, usually what we call an ambush predator, so it's not digging in the sediment. It's oftentimes you see it just sitting there and it waits for something to swim by, some sort of prey, and it snaps it up. Kind of, yeah, two, two forms of, uh, of, of life uh, in, the, in the fishes. There's, you know, your ambush predators, and then you have your, um, your foragers, maybe. So they're looking for you know, small invertebrates in the sediment or on the sediment. Ambush predators could be anywhere, but they're usually in sedimented environments, particularly with a, a moderately strong current uh, that delivers food to them.
have some fish based fans in the chat actually. They used it for setting up an aquarium at home. You know, I'm gonna look that up too. Do they have any information about beta fish? I have a beta fish back in California. All right, so the eight to 12 crew is starting to come in now. Um, again, the vehicles are making their way up to be recovered. And um, the ROV team is gonna go ahead and take a look at Hercules and Atalanta. But in the meantime, Stephanie's coming on and uh, she's gonna be on for the next few minutes before the vehicles make their way back to the deck. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. And we hope to see you again very soon. All right, have a great day.
copy that. What are we at right now? Yeah, I, I let him know earlier. Uh, duck van, we're at a one five zero at the moment. Uh, no. <laughs> Hydraulics working great at the surface, perfect. It looks like it's trending that way. Great. Okay. Oh yeah, it's we got the drift. We should just do a uh, dive. Is it? <laughs> Go ahead, bridge. Copy that. We'll move to radio comms. All stations, uh, Captain on the bridge, we'll continue on radio. So we'll go, I'll stop at 50 meters, okay. and then we'll switch the Loud and clear bridge. salvo to uh, uh, launch and recover. Uh, deck now, we're at 70 meters. Five zero meters here. Five nine. Uh, five nine is Atalanta's depth. So, or sorry, Herc's depth. I think you're 
payout is uh, 40 meters. Okay. So you can go all stop now. All stop. Sorry about that. We're at four zero. Yeah. Okay. Uh, deck, that's uh, all stop four zero meters. Copy. Uh, control van, uh, deck, could you uh, switch the cameras to recovery? That's, yeah, that's theirs. Copy. It's video's job. Uh, video, did you copy that? Yeah, it's part of the salvo. Great. Let me double oh. check. Oh. oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, it should be there. Is your, your auto heads off, good. When do we shut, like, the power to the vehicle, to Argus off? Uh, you can shut your sensors off. You can leave it going for a while. Okay. Uh, um, I'll shut everything off with one stroke when we shut, when we come down on AC. Okay. What's up? I'm hoping this is not accurate, since... Atlanta's coming up. But you're still below Atlanta, so we're okay. Yep. Yeah. 